Welcome Hello. here. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for uh, have make time for to uh, talk to our Congress uh, to talk about our your situation. Can you tell um, something about your where you are now and what um, how your daily basis is? I'm in Kiev now. Mm, uh, I am so to say on maternity leave uh, with my both sons but I am working for the trade union I'm still working for the trade union and continue to do my international work there activity there and can you tell us uh, something about the situation now in Ukraine and for the ed education workers and for the union in specific okay Okay, yes, of course, and uh, I want to say hello to everyone, to all the colleagues. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today and tell you about current situation in Ukraine. And as you know, uh, more than mm, 200 days, the full-scale war of Russia against the Ukrainian people has been going on. According to the Prosecutor's General Office of Ukraine, as of today, two, uh, 391 children were killed and more than 773 were injured in Ukraine as a result of Russian armed aggression. And, uh, you know, these figures are not final because almost every day new mass graves of innocent civil people are found in the newly liberated territories. Uh, you have probably seen the news recently about the liberated city of Izium, where more than 400 uh, civilians were found tortured and killed. The occupants destroy everything. They destroy critical infrastructure, residential buildings, hospitals, different uh, educational and scientific institutions, schools, kindergartens, libraries. As of today, uh, 2,480 educational institutions have already been damaged due to bombing and shelling by the Russian occupiers. 289 of them are completely destroyed. Now about 1,300 schools are located on the temporarily occupied territories. After the deoccupation of our territories, it is impossible to return to education, uh, educational institutions immediately. The mining and uh, reconstruction are needed there. Therefore, the vital issue for education sphere in the new academic year now is safety in educational institutions. Only 64% of schools have necessary shelters and uh, can continue education offline. According to the Ministry of Education, as of the beginning of September, 12,900 schools in Ukraine were able to start education. More than 300,000 children started their first school year. The form of education process is determined by military administrations and can be changed during the year, in particular at the parents' request. <clears throat> And today, education process takes place in different forms in Ukraine. For example, 38% of schools work offline, 27% of schools work online, and 35% uh, of uh, children study in a mixed form of education. Currently, educational institutions have autonomy in the organization of the educational process. Therefore, the decision on the form of work of teachers is made by the heads of institutions. If the school works in online or mixed mode, the teacher who is abroad can work remotely. <clears throat> Since February 24, Ukrainians have been forced to flee from the war to the central and western regions of our country and to European countries. Millions of people have received the status of internally displaced persons. Millions have fled abroad. According to the latest UN data in uh, uh, August and September, the number of refugees and internally displaced persons fleeing from the east and south of the country has increased because of active military actions uh, at these territories. And the number of Ukrainian refugees registered in Europe has now exceed 7 million. Some of them have returned to their regions and homes, 
those who were lucky that their houses remain remained intact and not bombed. The Ministry of Education reported that at the beginning of the new school year, almost 492,000 school-age children were abroad under the temporary protection of the EU countries. More than 3.5 thousand of teachers have returned to Ukraine and continue to teach here, but uh, another 13,000 are still outside the country. According to the Minister of Education, over 4,000 school children returned to Ukraine from abroad at the beginning of September. <clears throat> And uh, there is another uh, crucial topic for educators at this difficult period. I mean the salaries of educators. Spending on education has been reduced in the budget for the next year. Uh, that may affect teacher salaries and uh, other payments for educators. The dialogue of the Trade Union of Education and Science Workers of Ukraine with the government to prevent the reduction of teachers' uh, salaries continues. And uh, we understand, we all understand that the war is going on and more should be spent on defense, of course. However, we try to show the importance of education at this period, the importance of supporting teachers who are doing their work under difficult circumstances. And we are building a case to protect teachers' salaries. Because of the inflation and depreciation uh, of the national currency, the purchasing power of salaries has already reduced significantly. For almost eight months of war in Ukraine, our trade union, the Trade Union of Education and Science Workers of Ukraine, has provided and continues to provide uh, financial and humanitarian assistance to thousands of its members. The trade union used funds received from Education International Solidarity Fund and the trade union organizations from other countries and its own funds as well to provide financial assistance to its members where, who were wounded uh, and to the families of those educators who were killed, to those who lost houses and uh, whose houses were partially destroyed. Those internally displaced people who are trade union members received targeted financial aid from the trade union. In conclusion, on behalf of the Trade Union of Education and Science Workers of Ukraine and all Ukrainian educators, I would like to extend warm greetings and strong solidarity message to all the participants of the Congress. Ukrainians are resisting they are fighting not for, uh, only for Ukraine. They are fighting for the democracy and peace in Europe and in the whole world as well. And we will win this war. We have no other choice. We are sincerely grateful to all the countries, to all of you for your support of Ukraine, for your support of Ukrainian people and children who have fled from the war to your country and for your support of Ukrainian trade unions. We wish success to your Congress. We wish you fruitful discussion on how to address new challenges in the education sphere and to adopt decisions aimed to ensure the prosperity of your country, greater social dialogue, common welfare of working people, decent work and a sustainable peace in Europe. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Katerina. Um, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your story, for placing our challenges here in perspective. The freedom and peace we take for granted are under threat right now in Europe. With deepest respect, I wish you and your countrymen strength, fortitude, and a quick end to the war. And I think I'm speaking on behalf of all participants here and all members of the AOB when I say we stand in solidarity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katerina, for your time. Thank you.
Dank jullie wel. Dank je.